Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to easily narrow your handlebars, which of course means cutting the ends down. This is a really simple job, but sometimes it's necessary or nice to do. In my case, I've been working at an internet, not an internet cafe, but a coffee shop the past uh, couple weeks. And the big bars, not big bars, but the bars as they are, are kind of getting in the way. So uh, I'm actually gonna cut these down about one inch on each side, around 25 millimeters on each side, and uh, show you how I do it. It's a pretty simple job, but uh, let's get into it. Of course, with this type of thing, you want to take off a smaller amount than a bigger amount because you can always cut more but you can't really add any more on. So I'm gonna start off with just 25 millimeters, a little conservative and uh, go from there. First thing of course you need to do is get the grips off. This is sometimes probably gonna be uh, one of the harder parts of the whole job. If you have air, uh, compressed air in your shop, you can of course lift that. I'm sure you know that already and blow some air. That's a really great way to do it because you don't introduce any kind of chemicals onto the rubber. You can also slide a, like a screwdriver under, but you have to be very careful with that because it can overstretch the grips or it can even uh, tear the rubber if it's, if it's really tight. And the other thing you can do, I, I've done a lot, is um, spray some, uh, some kind of lubricant like uh, WD-40 into there, and that usually works really well. The bad part about that is though, um, I feel that it can kind of damage, break down or damage your rubber's ability to uh, to keep its elasticity. So I don't really prefer to do that if I'm gonna reuse them. And, and even this, you can see that it is actually, it's coming off with, with nothing but just some twisting action. So what I do is I twist at this end and then I, I start moving down and then it just slowly comes off. And the more it comes off, the easier it'll get because there's less surface area holding it in place. Once you get a couple to a few inches, it should start going a lot easier. There we go. Now I just have to do the same for the other side. Okay, I got both the grips off. So next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut one side. I'm gonna mark where I want it to be cut. And all you need for this is like a measuring tape or if you have even like a quarter or something, anything to make the distance, you know, that you want it to be that you can also measure accurately on the other side. Now I got this tattoo a little while back and I figured this might be a fun time to, uh, to try to use it. <laughs> so I marked one inch on this side. And the next thing you want to do is grab some tape, something like this black electrical tape. That way you can wrap it around and make sure that when you go to cut it, uh, you're cutting on the correct line. It's not crooked too much or anything like that. Now, none of this needs to be super precise, but you know, you want it somewhat straight. So you just try to make that go around as straight as you can and then meet back at the other one, the other side correctly, just like that. Of course, if you're uh, you know, really picky about this type of stuff, you can make it even much more accurate with calipers and all kinds of different methods. But I'm not too worried about it. That should be pretty close. Another good thing about this job is it's, it doesn't really require any kind of fancy tools. I'm just gonna use this uh, hacksaw. Like, you might notice here I'm not in my normal uh, shop. I don't have that shop anymore. We're between houses again, so I don't have a lot of choices in terms of tools. Now I do foresee perhaps this is going to be an issue because of this bolt here, but you know, any, any kind of hacksaw will do. So uh, the main key to doing this is just to go slow and just take your time. Just stop a lot and make sure you're cutting in the right place. Okay, everything's going pretty good. I'm probably about three quarters of the way through. It's getting, I put a little WD-40 on it just to allow the saw to move in the cut a little bit more easily. And it, sometimes it is getting hard to move it around. So sometimes at this stage you can, you can actually bend uh, away from the cut a little bit. Maybe it's, I'm doing that a little too prematurely, but sometimes you can open it up just a little bit to make it easier for the saw blade to fit.
There we go. I think that actually cut pretty accurately. Not too bad. You can see I don't have any tape on the cut piece. That's good. And that took uh, about nine minutes. It was 12.08 when I started. And now you want to grab a file. A little bit smaller one would be better and also one with a curve on the, on the one side uh, that I can get on the inside, but I actually don't have one at this house. So I'm just gonna, only going to be able to uh, dress the outside. Okay, that side is totally done. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing to the other side. Okay, I finished cutting the other end off and you can see they're not quite perfect, but you know, they're definitely close enough. With that, let's go ahead and finish this job up. Not a whole lot more to do now. I'm gonna take this tape off again. Then I'll, I'll uh, clean up the, the end of the bar. And one final thing we will have to do is move the brake levers inbound because now the grips are going to occupy the space which uh, they are now at. One tool I did uh, manage to bring with me through the move is of course my Park Tools AWS-1. So I'm just going to loosen these up nice and loose and move them completely out of the way so I don't have to worry about them until I get the grips on. All right, it's definitely narrower. So we, in total, took about 50 millimeters off 25.4. So 50 millimeters off of each side. Uh, I don't actually know the, the size now or before I didn't bother to measure. But anyway, let's go ahead and stick the grips back on. Of course, they go on just the way they uh, came off. You know what I might do is put a little bit of water on actually to, to kind of be like a bit of a lubricant, which of course water will is there any in this? Yeah, water will totally dry. The other thing that'll help with this uh, narrower handlebar is storage. Like in this house that we're in now, we don't have a garage. And so this bike kind of just goes in a miscellaneous place over by the hall. And, you know, having this extra, about that much room that people can pass will be good. So, th so this isn't really to like pass traffic or anything cool like that, uh, because this is really we're living in the kind of the suburbs here. Um, this is really just for uh, storage, just so when uh, the bike is parked, it doesn't get in people's way, so they're not snagging their shirts on it and stuff like that. I think we're yeah we're there. All right, that was pretty easy. Now I suspect when that water dries, that'll tighten back up. I think I'm gonna make another video on this bike. I actually got this bike just about three years ago. In December, it'll be three years. Uh, Detroit Bikes sent it to me as a review. And I, I liked it so much, I just kept riding it. <laughs> so um, I figure it might be nice to update everybody on how it's doing three years later. It's got a, a lot of use and it's not easy use. It's uh, really been kind of, I wouldn't say abused, but just used in a very realistic uh, setting, I would say. Okay, there we go. Got that one on nice and tight. Last thing to do are the brakes and the bell. And this job will be done. Now, I don't like having my brake calipers all the way jammed up, because I like to kind of grab more towards the end of them. So I like to give it like a quarter inch, something like that, on each side uh, to provide that extra leverage. When aiming my brakes, I actually like to sit in the saddle, kind of like this, on the saddle, in the saddle, kind of like this, and uh, just feel how it's gonna feel when I'm actually riding the bike. So right around there is the angle, which I like. Of course, I can do some fine adjustments later on, but it seems like that's a good, really good starting point. One thing that this does is kind of gives you a little extra cable, which isn't really what I would want. That's not a great thing. If I was really being picky about this, I would cut about an inch of my cable too, but I, I'm gonna just try to leave it be. I don't really feel like messing with that for such a little bit of cable today. But if you're going a massive amount narrower, then you probably would wanna 
shorten your cables too, just so they're not flopping around as much. Okay, well, anyway, I think we're pretty much done. Oh yeah, wow. I can really feel that's a lot narrower. Cool, that was really easy. So, there you have it. That's how you can narrow your handlebars on really any bike. Well, not a road bike, of course, not a racing bike, but uh, any kind of flat bar bike, it's pretty much gonna be the same procedure. I think it turned out great. Let me know if I'm missing anything, or if there's any other tips you guys have for narrowing bars, or if uh, any other better way I could have done that. Oh, that's right, I was gonna tell you how long the bars are now. Of course, it's not gonna be a perfectly accurate measurement because we have the, the grips on it now, but let's just, uh, let's take a look. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's take a look at what we have now. Uh, okay, I would say that's pretty much right on 23 inches. So I'll put, put that in metric on, this, on the screen. Uh, but I can tell you, it's definitely noticeably different. <laughs> but I think it's totally fine. Uh, you know, one, one tip I, I can give when you're thinking about narrowing your bars, is what, is, this is what I did, is I just rode with my hands more inbound for a little while just to kind of feel how that would be. And I was like, yeah, okay, I think an inch, inch on each side is, will, will be totally fine. So that gave me an idea. Yeah, and I feel good about this. This is really perfect for me. I mean, it was fine the other way too, but this way it'll, it still rides perfectly fine. I think I can still get plenty of leverage to, to sprint. Not that I do that a lot on this bike, but occasionally. Um, and it should help us out in the halls and when the bike is parked at the, at the cafe and all that stuff. So anyway, that'll be about it for this video. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll uh, talk to you guys next time. Bye.